Episode 21, Tantai Jinya and Shiwu Misunderstand Each Other Pian Ran told Yi Shiwu that she can go to the barracks to visit Tantai Jing quietly, and then secretly arranged for someone to send her back to Jinghua. Yi Shiwu hid aside to visit Tantai Jin, and saw that his injuries were not serious, but a crow appeared at this time, scared her, and she screamed. The crow then told Tantai Jin that Yi Shiwu was there, Tantai Jin found Yi Shiwu by the river, he happily hugged Yi Shiwu who had reunited after a long absence. He picked up Yi Shiwu and took her back to the camp to wash up, and personally rubbed medicine on her injured foot. Yi Shiwu looked at Tan Tai Jin who was taking care of her, and unconsciously her heart moved, King Sheng couldn't wait for Tan Tai Ming Lang to train the demon soldiers. Fu Yu came up with an idea that he could use the bones of Tan Tai Jin's closest relatives as a guide, and add nine pairs of virgins and a close person to sacrifice together, so that King Sheng could achieve his wish as soon as possible. King Sheng ordered people to fetch the bones of Tan Tai Jin's mother, and he planned to sacrifice the people close to Tan Tai Jin with Inksen, so that when the spell was completed, Tan Tai Jin would undoubtedly die. Yi Shiwu asked Tan Tai Jin if he was mad at her for sneaking into the barracks, but Tan Tai Jin didn't blame her. He told her that Pian Ran deliberately made things difficult for Yi Shiwu so she could leave. Yi Shiwu then said, Fine, I will leave. But Tan Tai Jin asked her to stay and recover from her injuries in the barracks. Yi Shiwu acted like a baby and said to Tan Tai Jin that it was his fault for leaving her alone in the palace and not saying a word. He comforted her, saying that he would never do that again and would be by her side. Yi Shiwu had tears falling down her face and felt warmth in her heart. When Tan Tai Jin learned that King Sheng had stolen his mother's bones, he was furious and rushed to Shang State with his soldiers overnight. King Sheng summoned a sorcerer to cast a spell, and the sorcerer said that after the success of the spell, Tan Tai Jin would fall ill and die in three months. Yi Shi Wu noticed that Tan Tai Jin had left in a hurry, and without knowing the reason, she quietly came to the Jingwa barracks to find Xiao Lin. She learned from Xiao Lin that Tan Tai Jin did not fight that night. Xiao Lin realized something was wrong and asked Yi Shiwu to return to Jinghua as soon as possible, while he rushed to Xingdu with his subordinates. Tan Tai Jin came to Xingdu and confirmed that King Sheng stole his mother's remains and even sacrificed innocent people of Sheng Kingdom in order to kill him. Unexpectedly, King Sheng smashed the container of Tan Tai Jin's mother ashes onto the ground. Tan Tai Jin was furious so he killed King Sheng with his own hands. Crazy Inksen thinks of Tan Tai Jin is a monster, and stabs him with a sharp sword. Tan Tai Jin said that the sword stabbing was repayment for Inksen's help in raising him, and now he can kill her with a free conscience. King Shang died tragically, and the palace of Shang Palace was in chaos. Yi Bing Shang ran away with a maidservant and ran into an eunuch holding a knife to rob money. Yi Bing Shang saw Tan Tai Jin in the Shang Wang Palace and realized that Tan Tai Jin was the most powerful person in the world now. Yi Bing Sheng begged Tan Tai Jin to take her back to Jinghua. And Tan Tai Jin thought for a while and agreed with her request. Although Xiao Lin brought people back to Xingdu, it was too late, King Sheng was already dead. On the way back to the camp, Tan Tai Jin learned from a crow that Yi Shi Wu went to Xiao Lin's barracks alone after he left, and Yi Shi Wu's actions might be suspected of collaborating with the enemy. Tan Tai Jin recalled Yi Shi Wu's series of actions, and misunderstood that Yi Shi Wu betrayed him for Xiao Lin. Yi Shi Wu learned from Pian Ran that Tan Tai Jin went to Xingdu last night, and she went to Tan Tai Jin and asked about it. But Tan Tai Jin misunderstood Yi Shi Wu and thought she cared about Xiao Lin, so he simply admitted that he went to Xingdu to kill Shang Wang Xian and Yingxin. Hearing Tan Tai Jin's brutal killing, Yi Shi Wu was very disappointed, and admitted that she was blind and mistakenly cared for Tan Tai Jin. She said she thought she could change Tan Tai Jin's evil nature, but now she regrets being by Tan Tai Jin's side for so long. The two had a big fight, and Yi Shi Wu left angrily. Pian Ran was worried about the injured Yi Ching Yu, so she quietly found medicine for him, and asked the soldiers not to tell Yi Ching Yu. Pian Ran accidentally saw Yi Bing Sheng who came to visit Yi Qingyu, she was quite surprised when she learned of Yi Bing Sheng's true identity.
When Xiao Lin learned that Yibing Sheng was taken to Jinghua, she was only thankful that her life was not in danger. Tan Tai Ming Leng learned that King Sheng's plan had failed, and he thought that now that the two countries in Shenjing were fighting, it would be a good thing for him to be able to die. Now that the formation will be completed, the entire southern border will become a poisonous fortress, and by then Tan Tai Jin will not escape death. Yi Bing Sheng came to thank Tan Tai Jin for saving her, and Tan Tai Jin asked her to accompany him day and night, and let her cook for him every day. This request made Yi Bing Sheng think that Tan Tai Jin really liked her. She intends to coax Tan Tai Jin into giving her a title as his concubine or wife.